All right, guys, we are at the 7 o'clock hour. Uh, hello and welcome if you've just joined us. I am Sunshine with Outdoor Chattanooga. Uh, I'm be your host this evening for the Hiking 101 workshop. Feel free to drop um, information, questions in the chat. And there is a link in there for a sign-in sheet. Um, we'd love to capture information from those attending. Um, that way we can continue to offer free workshops like this and just see who we are serving both in the community and I think nationwide. Um, so thank you so much for showing up tonight. I'm gonna give a few minutes for people to do that and we will get started shortly. everyone thanks for uh, dropping some chats in there I love it um, I've re um, attached the link um, for the sign-in sheet hopefully that gets you where you need to go if you continue to have issues please let me know uh, we'll find an alternate way to capture the information from you guys um, all right so as we're kind of letting people get signed in tonight uh, I'm gonna do a quick quick poll um, I kind of want to know where everyone's starting point is if we've hiked before or if this is our very first time never have I ever or I've dabbled a little bit so let me put that out there and give you guys some minutes to answer that and then I'll share the results So again, while you guys are doing that, my name is Sunshine. I'm with Outdoor Chattanooga. We are a division of the city of Chattanooga. We provide um, information and um, programs to get people outside um, within the Chattanooga region. Um, I loved seeing the Eventbrite signups that people are joining us from all over the country, um, even into Canada. So that is awesome. We are, we are broadening our reach right now, which is great. Um, all right, let's see what happened to that poll. All right. Got 79% of you voted. I think that's pretty good odds. So we'll go ahead and end that, and I will share the results. It looks like most of you guys have hiked before, which is awesome. Um, so we're not starting completely from scratch. This may have some information that you already know, but it doesn't hurt to get a little refresher course. Um, I've been hiking for years. I fell in love with the outdoors. Um, gosh, when I moved to Chattanooga way back in the 2000, um, and ever since then, I have enjoyed doing pretty much every outdoor activity, um, hiking a lot of the scenic trails that the Chattanooga region has to offer, um, as well as across across the country. So let me end this um, elevator music, which was awesome to get us started. Um, all right, I guess real quick, hopefully you guys can see my screen. I'm going to do a little presentation slideshow this evening and walk you through some things you need to know. Uh, if you guys have any issues, please drop um, that in the chat. And or if you have any questions as we go, um, you can put that in the Q&A, OK? Um, grateful for you guys to show up this evening. Uh, love that most of you are not starting from complete scratch, um, that we have some sort of expert hikers out there. And I'm excited to share what I know with you. So. Um, one of the first things you want to do before you start hiking um, is the prep. So let's get into that. How do you prepare for hiking? Um, for the most part, before you ever take the first step on the trail, you need to do a little prep. That includes like a workshop like this. Perfect. You guys showed up for it. I love it. Um, 
do a little research. Uh, we all have access to the World Wide Web these days, and that is a great um, resource to get information on where to go hiking, uh, what you should do to prepare for hiking, find trail maps and things like that. And we're definitely gonna get into all that this evening. Um, as a beginner hiker, I recommend choosing trails that are in line with your current fitness levels. Hiking is a great way to kickstart your exercise routine and get in shape. But if you pick a trail that's like above your ability, you won't enjoy it and you may not continue to go hiking. So um, I'll talk a little bit more about how to find hiking trails, the right hiking trail for you in a bit. Um, but prior to doing your first hike, doing some physical preparation um, and establishing a healthy awareness of your body uh, will help you grow your confidence as a beginner hiker. Many people are concerned with their own physical fitness levels. They worry they won't be able to complete a hike, um, but hiking is just as simple as walking in the woods. Uh, if you can walk down the street, you can just drive to a trailhead and walk in the woods. Um, it's that simple. So don't, don't overthink it. Um, hiking is the most simplest form of outdoor recreation. You're not running a marathon, you're not running a race. No one's timing you, so take it slow. Go at your own pace. Naturally, you'll stretch and grow into the activity the more often you do it. So just take your time with that. And let's check our fears. Fears are a big, they're a huge barrier to hiking. I'm curious to know what are some of your guys' fears with hiking? Um, I'm gonna put this out here and let's see what you guys, what you guys think. Uh, is it getting lost? Is it wildlife encounters, uh, snakes, bugs, and other creepy crawlies? I have no idea what I'm doing, so I don't wanna go do it. Um, I don't have anyone to go with. Um, that's a common one, you, you don't wanna go by yourself. Um, maybe it's other, something I didn't list there, which is fine, and I'd love to hear what that is from you guys. Or maybe it's all of the above, it's a little bit of everything. It's just like, it, hiking's overwhelming, I don't know how to do it. Uh, please teach me everything you know. So. Um, leave that pull up for just another second or two. Some of these fears may be perceived or real. Um, a lot of us have some perceived fears that aren't necessarily uh, real or valid, and that's fine. Um, I'm going to meet you guys where you're at and, and talk you through everything tonight. All right, looks like 92% of you voted. You guys are the most interactive group ever. I love it. Thank you so much. All right, 96%. Um, and this poll, it's been at a minute. To share this with you guys. It looks like getting lost is our, is our number one concern out there, followed by snakes, bugs, and other creepy crawlies. <laughs> uh, I'm with you guys. I do not like snakes. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of bugs, spiders, no thank you. Um, so I get it. I'm with you guys. Uh, and wildlife encounters. Uh, surprisingly, you only run into the really cute, sweet ones uh, for the most part. Uh, encountering, you know, big, big game like the bears and other things that might pose a threat to you uh, happens very, very, very rarely, actually, especially if you go to more prominent hiking trails. All right. Thank you guys for participating in my polls. I love it. All right. Let's get physical. Let's take it. Let's take it back back there. All right. So if we want to go hiking, we want to improve our physical fitness. Um, great ways to do that. Hiking is fun and it's good for you too. If you're concerned about your physical fitness, don't be. There's countless studies and research show that regular exercise improves your overall health and fitness. So just by nature of going hiking, you're going to get better at it. Um, hiking is great for improving cardiovascular health increasing lung capacity, improving balance, building muscle, increasing bone density, and helping with weight loss. So if these are things that you need assistance with, get out there, get hiking. Um, hiking gives us an opportunity to unplug from technology. In this modern society, this digital age, that's extremely important. It can also ease stress and anxiety, boost our confidence and self-esteem, and improve sleep, memory, and brain function, if all of these aren't compelling enough reasons to get you out on the trail, I don't know what is. Um, but as a beginner hiker, don't get caught up in going all out. Like, you don't need to jump into running uh, a 26.2 mile marathon. Uh, start with start with short hikes. Start with flat trails and slowly build up to those longer distances with more elevation changes as your fitness levels increase. Uh, do simple stretches. They'll help ease stiffness and minimize aches and pains. And then listen to your body, you know it best. So if you're hurting, stop, rest, take a break. Um, if, if you feel good, if you feel great, push yourself a little harder, go a little further. 
Um, just don't overdo it right out of the gate. Otherwise, you won't want to do it. It's got to be enjoyable. Um, you definitely want to protect your knees and your ankles. Um, because you are walking on uneven terrain, not flat paved surfaces, uh, if, if you're coming from an urban setting and those concrete jungles, which are nice and flat for the most part, uh, getting out on um, uneven terrain can be stressful on your knees and ankles. So having good quality shoes, ankle protection, and hiking poles are great ways to protect um, those knees and ankles. So let's get right into the gear. All right. What gear do I need to go hiking? Well, hiking is one of the simplest outdoor activities to participate in. It doesn't require a lot of high-tech gear. Um, a, a simple backpack, a small backpack, which we call a day pack, sturdy shoes, proper clothing, and carrying your own water and snacks is all you need to get started. So it's pretty simple. A small backpack, often referred to as a day pack, is great to store and carry out, carry your water, snacks, and the 10 essentials. It'll also free up your hands while you're hiking, which is important, especially if you're carrying hiking poles, trekking poles. A day pack will be anywhere between 15 to 20 liters. It's like similar to what we used to carry our books to uh, in, well, way back when we were in school. <laughs> uh, so something rather small, even a fanny pack. Um, these are gonna be the size you want for a shorter hikes, anything under like the two hour mark. Uh, pack size will increase as your distance and time spent outside increases. Um, if you go more than two hours, um, venture a little further out into the woods, you're gonna wanna jump up to like a 30 liter. Anything 50 plus is definitely for overnight backpacking. You don't need anything quite that big, but uh, a backpack that can carry extra clothes, the water, the snacks, um, maybe has its own reservation or bladder, uh, reservoir for water. Um, these are all great things to have in store in a backpack. Trekking poles, they're completely optional. Um, I personally have not hiked with them before, um, but I'm thinking about making that investment as I get a little older, I want, and I've had a knee injury, I kind of want that um, extra added stability. Uh, they're great for creek crossings and they come in handy sometimes in a pinch if you ever need to make like a makeshift shift shelter if you get caught outside, uh, if you do get lost on the trail and need to make your own shelter. So trekking poles, um, great for ankle issues, long distance, uneven terrain, the, all gear is a personal choice. Over time, you're gonna figure out what does and doesn't work for you. Um, the number one question most people have is what shoes, what hiking boots are best? What are the best hiking boots? Um, I actually just saw a friend post that earlier today. Uh, completely personal choice. Everybody's personality is different. Everybody's foot is different. In fact, my left foot, my right foot don't even match. They're, they're not even like symmetrical. So um, you're gonna have to go physically to retail stores, try things on um, and figure out what works for you. Some people want that high ankle support and a full boot, hiking boot. Um, to create a sturdy platform. Other people like minimalist running shoes to go hiking. So again, go out, try a few, figure out what works best for you. There is no right or wrong answer to that. Um, I typically hike in trail runners, um, unless I'm doing something much more long distance and further, or it's really cold out, then I put on my hiking boots. So I have two different options depending on where I'm going and, and what kind of trail I'm gonna be on. Um, Let's see, what's next? Clothes, that's a big question too. Um, oh, the other thing I wanna make a point about with your hiking boots, they, or shoes, don't buy them straight off the shelf and go on your first hike. <laughs> that's like pitfall number one. You're gonna end up with blisters, you're gonna be unhappy. M wear them around the house, break them in really well before you ever venture out into the woods. Uh, don't go bite off a couple miles in brand new, brand new shoes. Um, you, you'll thank me later. Break them, break them in really well before you go um, trek those long distances. Otherwise, you're going to end up with blisters. And for socks, I avoid cotton. That's like a rule in the outdoors. Avoid cotton, cotton socks, cotton clothing. Um, it tends to hold moisture, so it'll either keep you cold or cause friction. Um, and friction is not your friend. It leads to blisters, so or chafing for that matter. So um, that's kind of my advice on shoes. Uh, I know it doesn't really, most people are just like, what shoe should I get? You got to go try them on yourself. Um, 
As far as clothing, choose clothes that are made of quick drying, moisture wicking fabrics such as wool or polyester, fleece, things like that. Uh, again, avoid cotton. It takes too long to dry when you're wet. The only time cotton is good is like maybe in the middle of the summer in the desert when you do want to pour water on it and keep the water on you. That's like the only time that cotton is good, okay? Um, walking you through kind of the layering system of clothing. Next to skin base layers. Those are typically made of like wool or polyester. And these are really important in cool to cold temperatures. So not so much in the summer heat in Chattanooga, but if you're up north somewhere, especially this time of year in, in the south, you, you do want a base layer um, against your skin. Uh, it helps insulate and keep you warm. Um, second layers are going to be like nylon and polyester pants, a t-shirt, again, nylon or polyester, spandex is okay, um, sun protection, um, a shirt or a sun hat, things to keep you covered from the sun, especially in those hotter months in the heat. Uh, and if you're on really exposed trails, um, you know, desert hiking versus mountainous hiking in great canopy. Um, insulation, depending on, again, the weather, you might need a puffy jacket or vest. Um, you might need a lightweight fleece pullover, warm hat, gloves. Um, man, gloves are important when it's cold outside. I went the other day and my fingers got cold and I, I didn't pack the right gloves. So uh, even as a seasoned veteran, sometimes you learn the hard way. <laughs> and then, then you learn the hard way. So you'll have what you need. Um, rain wear, I pretty much, no matter, even if I'm just running down the road, I pretty much always pack a rain jacket with me. You never know when a pop-up storm is gonna happen. And if you're wet, you're miserable. If you're dry, you're happy. So always pack a rain jacket or a poncho, like those little, you know, they can be super small, um, the little garbage bag style kind. Um, in case you hit a pop-up storm, you're gonna want that rain protection. Um, real quick, I saw a question come through. Let's see if I can access it. Uh, I cannot, let me, I will check your questions and answer those at the end. Hopefully you will stick around for that. All right, that is the gear and the clothing. Let's get into the 10 essentials. So 10 essentials could save your life in a worst case scenario emergency situation. These are recommended when setting out on hikes in unfamiliar and remote locations. So many hikes in the Chattanooga area, they're gonna be under the two hour mark. You're not gonna go that far. They're on well-marked trails. I, I wouldn't say that you absolutely need to carry shelter, fire, all of that with you, but it doesn't hurt to kind of have this stash to the side and put in your hiking pack if you know you're going to go on a longer trek, anything over that two hour mark. Um, it could potentially save your life. So number one, navigation tools. This would be a trail map, a compass, an alt altimeter, GPS device. These are like for backcountry situations. Uh, I think for most trails and especially starting out, a simple trail map will suffice. That's the bare minimum of what you need to get out there. Um, and or your cell phone with the GPS tracking device. I've used that several times uh, when I am out on the trail. That way, if I get a little turned around, I can always follow <laughs> my little snail trail all the way back to where I started. <laughs> Uh, second thing would be a headlamp um, and extra batteries, of course, in case you find yourself still out on the trail after dark. This way you can illuminate your path. Sun protection, very important. That comes in the form of sunglasses, sunscreen, sun protective clothing, hats, um, anything to keep yourself out of the elements, um, especially in those uh, more dry, arid desert uh, locations. First aid. Um, most important thing in a first aid kit, you can buy off the shelf ones. Um, they're pre-made, so it takes the guesswork out of it. Most people like to make their own over time and only carry what they think they're going to need. Two of the most important things you can have, foot care for dealing with blisters, because that is kind of the most common thing you're going to deal with on the trail. Um, the second would be um, bug repellent, <laughs> uh, especially down here in the south. Uh, bug repellent. Oh my gosh. I went to Florida and the mosquitoes will take you away. So bug repellent and blister material are two of the most important things to put in your first aid kit. Um, any kit should include treatment for blisters, band-aids, 
gauze pads, tape um, to you know stick things to, disinfectant ointment, maybe over the counter pain medication um, and gloves. In case you ever take care of anybody else, you have that protection, uh, that personal protective equipment between you and them. All right, a knife um, and maybe some gear repair things. Um, so a knife is great for food preparation, maybe first aid, cutting rope, string, uh, tape, whatever you might need, making kindling in case you do need to build a fire and any other emergency needs. So I, just a little pocket knife is a perfect thing to take with you. Um, it, it will come in very handy more often than, than you think. Um, a repair kit, common items include like duct tape, um, some cord or paracord, rope, a string, something to tie things with. Fabric repair, tape, zip tie, safety pins, um, repair parts for your water filter, um, tent poles, things like that. Um, if you're in snowy conditions, crampons, snowshoes, skis, those may be things you want to consider taking out with you as well. We don't really deal with that down here in Chattanooga, so uh, I'm not really going to talk much about that. Fire, you want to take fire with you. Take some matches, take a lighter, um, take a little tin, Put some uh, tinder in there, whether it's, you know, lint out of your dryer or some cotton balls soaked in petroleum, anything that'll ignite quickly, especially if you find yourself in a really damp situation. Um, shelter. There's emergency bivvies, there's space blankets, there's ultralight tarps. It's a variety of forms of thing that you can like set up quickly, uh, a, an emergency shelter if you had to. We'll actually be offering another workshop that covers that um, next month. Extra food, extra water always carry more than you think you're gonna need. Um, when you get hungry, you get hangry. So have more food than you think you're gonna need. And if you run out of water, man, that, that's just not fun. So take more than you think you're gonna need. It can be tough as a beginner hiker to know how much food and water you need, but a good general recommendation um, is we eat two to 300 calories per hour when we're being active. So for water intake, about half a liter per hour for moderate activity. Um, there's just some numbers to throw at you, which a lot of you are like, I don't even know what that means. Um, but those are, if, if you're into science and numbers and things, that's kind of the baseline for that. You're gonna fine tune that and figure it out on your own. Some days you're gonna be more hungry than others. So these amounts depend heavily on factors such as the intensity of your hike, the weather, your age, your sweat weight, your body type, so as you gain more experience, you'll get a better sense for just how much you need. Um, it's always a good idea to carry extra clothes, like that rain jacket I mentioned earlier, the poncho, and just an extra layer or two in case you need it. It's always better to have it and not need it than not have it and absolutely need it. So those are the 10 essentials. These are local retailers to Chattanooga that you can purchase this equipment from. I think REI is national, so um, you probably have an REI near you. Rock Creek is a local place here to Chattanooga. Um, they have several storefronts that you can go in, talk to gearheads and um, get advice on the best hiking boots, poles, backpacks, um, water filtration systems. Um, these retail stores hire people that love to be outside and outdoor people love sharing their love of the outdoors. So don't hesitate to ask them about hiking trails or best gear or like pick their brains. That is exactly what they are there for. Um, and it's way better than shopping online because you're helping a local retail store and getting advice from a local. So Four Bridges and the Gear Closet are two resale stores here in Chattanooga. So if you are on a budget, this is a great place to go to get secondhand gear. Um, they're two of my favorite places to shop. So that's where I tend to head. There's also the Bass Pro Shop and Sportsman's Warehouse also offer hiking boots and other things related to hiking. So those are places that you can go get what you need. Um, moving on, the trails. How do I find the trails though, Sunshine? How do I get there? Um, a barrier for many first time hikers is simply knowing how to find and choose the right trail. And it can seem overwhelming um, because there are so many choices. It's kind of like the toothpaste style in your local department store. Um, things are, it's just overwhelming. There's too many choices. So um, don't let the multitude of options and the unfamiliar terms scare you or discourage you. Once, once you know where to look and what to look for, 
you're, you're gonna narrow down your options pretty quickly. So hiking for beginners should always be enjoyable. It should match your skill level. So you wanna pick well-maintained trails that are clearly marked and manageable for where your skill level is at now. And that's gonna vary for every single person. Um, in general, um, I want you, to, want you guys to remember the following when choosing a route. Distance, time, time spent outside. Weather, check the weather before you go, always. Elevation, loss and gain. Your fitness ability and the logistics of getting there. So not just the time spent outside, but how much time is it gonna take me to drive to get there? What's the sun gonna be doing? Am, am I going late enough in the day that sunset could happen and fall upon me? Am I going early enough in the morning that that's not a concern? So these are things to kind of think through before you pick a trail. Um, ask yourself beforehand, how far should I go? How much elevation is too much? Like a thousand feet may not sound like a lot, but if you're a first time hawker, a thousand feet is a lot. <laughs> uh, so it, it could prove to be pretty challenging and you may not make as much ground as you had hoped because of how tough the elevation change was. Um, so again, start small as you build your confidence, work your way up to those more difficult hikes. So let's dive a little deeper into the online resources. Um, OutdoorChattanooga.com, of course I have to do that shameless plug because we're the ones hosting this workshop. Other workshops, or I'm sorry, other websites, I'm gonna cover that as well. Uh, there are a multitude of apps. There are enough people in the world hiking, they've made an app for that. We'll cover those. Guidebooks, if you're still old fashioned and want that handheld book, um, trail maps and other things, the beta listed from somebody that's been there before you, you can still find those at local retailers and visitor centers. There's also local clubs, meetup groups that you can get a lot of beta from, and then guide services and retailers, which I kind of covered already. Um, but guide services would actually be like paid for or free guided hikes through state parks and uh, even an organization like us. So the World Wide Web, it will take you there. Um, if you're in the Chattanooga region, your best resource for locating hiking trails um, is outdoorchattanooga.com. And we have it backslash activities, hiking. Um, it will showcase difficulty ratings, trail maps, driving directions to trailheads and more. So. Uh, hopefully you guys can still see the screen. This is Outdoor Chattanooga's website. This is the homepage. Um, you can search this by activities around Chattanooga. And so you can click on any of these thumbnails here to get to the activity you're interested in doing within an hour's drive of Chattanooga, okay? So I'm gonna click on the hiking page. That's gonna take me to, um, content and all the locations around Chattanooga that I can go hiking at. So again, it doesn't tell me much because it's like, I don't know what these places are, but that's fine. Just click on any one of these and it's gonna drop down information and you're gonna quickly learn what type of setting this is. So besides giving some brief information, it's gonna highlight the activities that you can do at that site. This one is hiking running, biking. Google Maps will be the driving directions to the trailhead. You can click on that and it'll link out to something else. Um, hopefully that's pulling up for you guys and you see how seamless that works. So I'll take you right to the trailhead and you can literally hit directions and navigate yourself there. Um, you can see the difficulty ratings for the activities that are listed. There is a trail map. So if I click this, Again, it will open up a trail map for that area. Most of them are gonna be PDFs and downloadable, so you can print them out and take them with you, or maybe even save them to your phone so you have it in your hand. It'll show the hours and costs, whether it's um, pet friendly, and the contact information for the governing body of that um, site. So that's kind of Outdoor Chattanooga's quick and dirty, how to navigate to the various hiking trails. So another one, Richie Hollow, 
Um, 2.7 mile one way, 5.4 miles round trip, moderately strenuous with over 1,200 feet of elevation gain. The hiking difficulty rating is much higher than that Big Saudi Creek Gulf, which is relatively flat and wide. So just spend a little time up front researching these and figuring out, okay, that seems like I can bite that off today. I'm going to go give that one a try or tomorrow or whenever. Um, so that's how to use Outdoor Chattanooga's website. Other ones include NPS, which is the National Park Service. Um, national parks, state parks, county parks. These are going to be great places to go. Why? Restroom facilities for the most part. Rangers on hand in case anything happens. Well signed for the most part. They're going to have a lot of signage and trail maps like right at the trailhead, um, directing you where to go. And they're more heavily trafficked than some of those remote locations. So if you're new to hiking, going to a state park, a county park, a national park is going to be a better way to go. Um, just because they're going to have the kinds of um, information and trails and resources available to help you. Um, real quick, I'll click through some of these. Um, the nps.gov, you can literally search their site via, by, by state. So I would click on Tennessee because I'm in Tennessee. And it's going to list all the national parks within Tennessee for me. Um, I know that the one closest to Chattanooga is Chickamauga and Chattanooga National Military Park. That will open up their page specifically. And then from there, I can get information like seasonal closures, how to plan my visit, educational programs, and then over here, the outdoor activities in the park. If I click that, that's gonna pull up hiking and running and the trail maps. So what I can do there at those locations. Um, they also offer cycling and other things, but for, for the purposes of this workshop for hiking, that, that would be how you would navigate the National Park Service website to find a hiking trail near you, okay? Um, second, Tennessee State Parks, again, because we are in Tennessee. Um, if you click on theirs, you can find a park, click activities and events. I'd already set it to go to um, hiking and, well, I actually went to about things to do. Um, anyways, you can click on any of these to find hiking trails. So events, activities, hiking, and it's going to list all the parks near me that have trails, um, park trail maps. Those are downloadable and printable, which is awesome if you, if you like having that paper map. Um, geo reference PDF maps. So again, online versions, so you can take them with you for your, on your phone. Um, and then our Tennessee state parks, and I, I would feel other states do this as well, they offer ranger-led hikes. And so here's a list of their special hiking dates for 2021 already. So um, that state park websites are great places to go to find hiking trails and information. Um, we have here in Hamilton County, which is where Chattanooga sits, has um, great county parks, one of them being Enterprise South Nature Park. And you can quickly go to their site and pull up a hiking trail. They have hiking, biking, and horse trails, and you can print out the map that you want. You can also get information here. Hey, look, there's my trail, Sunshine Trail. Um, with the length, the miles, the distance, the difficulty ratings, what the surface is, which is kind of nice to know that stuff, whether it's you know wood mulched or um, completely dirt, single track, and then what the features are um, and whether or not it's open. So. This website does a great job of breaking that information down even further, kind of at like a glimpse, so you can get what you need quickly. Um, other great websites I love, theoutbound.com. It's kind of a user-purposed website for all things outdoor, camping, hiking, biking, running. People submit little articles about things to do, um, and you can find and search your region. So again, your adventure starts here, find local hikes, camping tours, adventures around the globe. They have a lot of beta for Chattanooga. Hopefully wherever you're from, they have beta for you as well. Alltrailsandhikingproject.com. These are both great for 
locating trails near you. And then if you have the app, which I'll get into, you can actually track and record your hike, see your distance, uh, have it use it as a GPS um, map tracker and kind of a fitness tracker as well. So alltrails.com is a great thing, free to log in and create an account with and get trail maps and other things that you need. Driving directions. Oh, and there's a lot of user feedback on that one as well. Hiking project is very similar. So I would love guys throw it in the chat or um, yeah, throw it in the chat. Tell me what, if I've missed any, what um, websites you enjoy using to find local trails. And I would love to hear this from people that maybe even aren't from Chattanooga. Um, but there are, there's so many out there. Again, it's like the toothpaste style at your department store. It can be overwhelming, but once you know your location and where to look, you're going to narrow things down pretty quickly. So let's see. Um, moving on. How to find your way. So once you guys get out on the trail, you've done all the prep work in advance, you've checked the weather, you've checked your fears, you've, you've got everything you need, your backpack's packed, your, your boots are on, you're ready to walk out the door. How are you gonna navigate on the map? And again, this was the number one fear that everyone had. Um, it just takes a little pre-planning. Carry a trail map, have a guidebook, know how to follow trail signs. All trails pretty much use the trail blaze system, which is going to be a, a, a painted marker on trees every so often um, to let you know that you are still on the right path. And if there are multiple trails within a system, those colors will change depending on um, if, you've, if you've taken a turn and gone onto a different trail. So knowing how to do that is, is key. Um, second, use an app. <laughs> like where you are in a digital age, it is okay to use technology to help get you outside and unplug. Uh, I take my phone, number one, for pictures, number two, to help me navigate. Um, so take your phone, make sure it's charged, and use one of these apps, All Trails, Hiking Project. They are trail finders. You can literally, like, with your, your GPS locator on your phone, will help you connect with trails near you. Um, there's user reviews, there's pictures. You can find out if those pictures are like, yeah, I wanna go see that with my own two eyeballs. Or, yeah, I, I don't wanna go do a five mile hike just to, you get the idea. Um, I'm a little unfamiliar with this, but I think it's awesome. The Gaia GPS is topo and satellite maps. So when we talk about topography, that's your elevation loss and gain. That's like um, how steep um, a mountain range is versus uh, flat land. So being able to look at topographic maps, which is topo, that's short for topographic, um, and satellite maps is, is pretty helpful sometimes. Even in that picture in the slideshow there, there's some lines um, within that map that indicate how tall, how much elevation gain there is um, in that particular area. So um, fat map, uh, again, new to me, but is a trail finder and a map. You can click on it and it gives you beta about local trail systems. View Ranger, again, another trail finder and tracker. So you can track uh, your hike along the way. Karen, um, this is something kind of new. It's a safety tracker and provides alerts. You can set it up that if you do get lost or you're not back by a specific time, um, it will alert people that you want to know. That way, um, maybe somebody can come find you if needed. Spyglass is a high-tech compass and GPS navigator. Um, so if you, if you don't have like a handheld compass, you can download this app on your phone and use it as a compass. Um, I use Strava for a lot of things, um, mainly as a fitness tracker, but to track my hikes, to track my, my bike rides and things like that. That's a simple one. A lot of people have it. That's why I put it on there. iNaturalist is a cool app. Um, it turns you into a citizen scientist, um, encourages you to like look at plants and wildlife along your hike, take pictures, upload it to their system. Um, it's global. Like 
And then it has this great database of all the plants and wildlife um, within an area. Geo tags your location from your picture. So um, that's a really cool thing and great to use with kids too, to get them interested in learning about what's in their natural environment. Uh, Google Earth, pretty much everyone's familiar with. And then there's a GPS tracks, but it's iOS only. I'm not an Apple user, so I cannot speak to how that works. Um, the last way to find your way, go take a map and compass course. Um, we will be giving away a map and compass course from REI, our friends at REI. Um, offered one up to give away um, to one person that attended this course. And that is a great way to learn how to use a topographic map and a compass to find your way in the backcountry setting. Um, mostly just having a traditional trail map would be sufficient, but if you wanna get deeper and spend more time, even days traveling by two feet in the woods, having a map and compass course under your belt is not a bad thing to do. So um, that is kind of all about the trails. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions, I didn't cover something, please put it in the Q and A, and I will get to that at the end of this. Uh, two more topics to cover, and we'll be wrapping it up. Hiking, you can go solo, but I love hiking because of the social aspect, connecting with others and building community. Uh, there are ways that you can get plugged into the hiking scene so that you can unplug from technology more. Um, some guided hikes with local guide services or the park rangers, like I talked about earlier, these are great options for beginner hikers. Not only do you get to go with a professional and you don't have the worry, but you also meet other people during the group hike. So this is a great way to get connected. Here at Outdoor Chattanooga, we offer a guided hiking series pre-COVID times. Hopefully we will pick that back up soon. Um, but basically our guides are with you. We provide information. We talk you through trailblazes, um, how to read trail maps, um, and we even offer a shuttle for a one-way hike. So um, we highlight our Cumberland Trail, which is a almost 300 mile long linear trail here that starts in the backyard of Chattanooga. Um, let's see, REI, of course, they offer guided hikes. They offer a variety of things, but guided hikes is one of them. So you can check with your local REI to see what outdoor experiences they are offering. Here in Chattanooga, we have Experience Chattanooga which is a young couple that started a guided hiking service. They'll literally come pick you up, take you to Trailhead. You do not have to think about anything. They provide water and, and everything and take professional pictures. Um, I, I think going again, highlighting state parks, county parks, national parks, those tend to hold the most scenic landscapes. So it's worth going for a hike there, but then they also have the rangers, the resources, the restrooms, the maps, everything there on hand in case you show up empty handed, so to speak. Uh, here in Chattanooga, we have a lot of awesome clubs, including the Chattanooga Hiking Club. Those are a great way to meet other hikers. Um, there's meetup.com, which is again, nationwide. You can search by town and then you can put in your interests. So if you put in, I'm in Chattanooga and I'm interested in hiking, um, it'll start blasting you emails with events that are hiking related. You can even narrow that down by joining groups that are like focused, like find your tribe, right? So groups like Trail Dames, they're women of curvy nature. That's their tagline, not mine. Um, there's Outdoor Afro for people of color. There's LGBTQ hiking groups, veterans hiking groups. Um, you name it, if you feel like you belong in that category, that group probably exists and it's a great way to make friends. Uh, I prefer hanging out with my friends if we go do a hike, a mountain bike or a paddle. Uh, that's how I like to socialize with my friends. So it's, it really is a great way um, to get to know people. Otherwise, invite your own friends and family, get them active with you, get into the hobby together. Or if you're a dog person, take your favorite furry friend with you. Um, maybe they will enjoy uh, the time spent out in nature on the trail as well. Maybe they won't be so hyper when you get home. <laughs> uh, but having a good four-legged uh, friend that likes to go hiking is awesome as well. So those are kind of my suggestions on the social aspect. 
Um, again, if you have any questions related specifically to that, how you can get plugged into these groups, um, please put it in the Q&A and I will address it. All right, last thing I wanna cover tonight is trail etiquette. Um, having an awareness of like yourself and the impact that you have while you're outside is basic hiking 101. Um, it's also the key to having a good experience. So knowing and understanding basic trail etiquette um, is, is key, along with this, the leave no trace um, principles. Um, if you know these things, you're gonna look like a seasoned hiker, even if you're brand new to the game. So let's, let's get into it. As, as like, I think COVID taught us one thing, and that is when we're told to stay inside and away from others, we go outside. Uh, the, the sales for camping equipment, hiking equipment, biking equipment, paddling equipment, all of it went through the roof during COVID. Um, everybody felt the need to get outside, even those that hadn't done it in a while. And I think that occurred with hiking because again, it's the simplest form of getting outside, uh, except maybe having a picnic in the park. But and going hiking has become increasingly popular along with the other outdoor activities. And I think this is a good side effect of COVID. Don't get me wrong, I hope it continues. But congestion on our trailheads and parking areas has also increased. So number one, have a backup plan in case you show up to the trailhead and it, the parking lot's full. Typically the size of the parking lot indicates the size, the, tr the amount of traffic the trail can handle. And so if the parking lot's full, you making your own parking spot, you're now degrading the, the land around you and then you're overcrowding the trail system. So this, this is something that I'm pretty adamant about. If the parking lot's full, go somewhere else. So always have a backup plan um, before you head out. And I know that's hard for a lot of people because a lot of people do drive an hour or two hours to go to a hiking trail. And like, it's really frustrating when, when the parking lot's full, but I bet if you drove an hour or two, there's a nearby trail that's less traffic that you can find and have just, as good of a time on. So um, some trails are directional. So check your signage. And directional trails occur because there's they're multi-use trails. Multi-use means hikers, mountain bikers, and horses. So those are the three types of users that you will typically find on a trail system. And so if a trail is directional, it's attempting to put hikers and bikers in opposite directions. That way they come face to face with one another instead of a mountain biker coming up on a hiker and scaring the ever living daylights out of them. So check that and that way you don't get snuck up behind while you're out on the trail. Now, if they're not directional and it is multi-use, just be aware that will occur and we'll get into how to share the trail with others. So um, for the most part, um, it's it, for, sorry. Hikers, sorry, bikers should yield to hikers, but hike, bikers can't like stop as quickly. So if they're coming on a downhill and you're kind of on an uphill, it, sometimes it's just easier for you to jump out of the way as a hiker. Technically bikers sh should yield to hikers. That's the courtesy. Um, both hikers and bikers should yield to horses. Horses get spooked easily. And so it's just nice not to sneak up on them whether from the front or the rear and um, end up scaring them and spooking their rider off of them. So to reiterate, <laughs> hikers should yield to horses. Bikers should yield to everybody. Uh, bikers should slow down and yield to everybody. Now, does everybody in the world know these trail etiquettes, common courtesies? No. You're gonna have a lot of people that are out there for the first time or are new to the sport and they don't know what they're doing. Maybe they're out of control on their bike. Um, just have common sense. And if somebody's flying at you too fast, jump out of the way. Sometimes it is easier for a hiker to step off the trail than it is for a mountain biker to put on the brakes, stop, dismount and get around you, okay? As far as passing other hikers on the trail, if this is a hiking only trail, um, people going uphill, should should have like the right of way. People should yield to 
people coming downhill should yield to people going uphill. Um, you have gravity on your side, people climbing, let them keep climbing, let them keep that pace. Um, and, and if you're going downhill, it's just easier to step off and then keep rolling. Solo hikers should yield to larger groups. Again, easier for one person or a small group to step off the trail and let a large group pass, especially if they're like good, good behavior, single file, walking in line, not being loud, not have a boom box with them, um, be polite and let them go. And a common courtesy is to talk to people as they pass, say hi. Uh, you know, if, if, you're, if you're in a really remote setting, ask about trail beta, like what's going on up there? How is the weather? Do, how are the bugs? You know, are, are there water sources? Things that you might need to know. Um, sometimes those conversations actually save a life. So don't be, don't be scared to have a little chit chat when you pass by people. Um, don't wear headphones. Don't bring a boom box. The whole point of going into nature is to enjoy the solitude of nature, the sounds of nature naturally. <laughs> don't, don't bring your music and share it for everyone they probably don't want to hear it. That's not their playlist. Their playlist was going to enjoy the sounds of nature today. So um, that's kind of the quick and dirty of that. I hope I said everything correctly. Let's talk about um, hiking with kids and dogs. There's no wrong time to get kids involved in hiking. Sharing the wonder and the beauty of the outdoors with children is a special experience. Kids of almost any age can go hiking from infants and baby carriers to grade schoolers who can hike on their own two feet. Just keep them dry, keep them warm, keep them fed, right? Same you would do inside the house. Um, the earlier you can get them into it, the more they appreciate it and the better stewards they're gonna be um, of our natural, uh, our public lands and our natural areas anyway. So I encourage you to take kiddos with you. Let their imaginations and creative powers run wild and free and let them burn up that energy. We spend way too much time in front of technology, especially during COVID. Um, dogs, if you have your own four-legged friend, adventurous friend to hike with, the first step, check to make sure that they're allowed where you're going. If you remember back to when I went through Outdoor Chattanooga's website, we actually list that. Are dogs allowed? Yes, on leash. Pretty much no matter where you go, they have to be on a leash. But some national parks do not allow dogs on the trail. So please check with those websites before you load up your pup, because it would be unfortunate to get out there and you don't want to leave them in the car. So um, some tips, have your dog carry their own food and water. Don't carry it for them. Make them do the work. Uh, they can, they make special dog packs for that. Stop often for snacks and water. Make sure it's not too hot for them. Um, they don't cool their bodies as well as we do. Um, and it is very, very, very poor form to leave poop or poop bags on the trail to pick up later because you may forget or somebody may accidentally step in it or an actual wildlife critter may come and help themselves into it. So just carry that stuff with you, all right? That gets me into the last point, which is practicing leave no trace principles anytime you recreate outside. The seven principles, well, let's talk about leave no trace is a nonprofit organization that has established a framework of ethics and best practices for reducing our impact when we go outside. So the purpose is to build a foundation and respect of responsible decision-making when we spend time outdoors so that we can conserve the integrity of the land and the wild places we love exploring, um, not just for our generation, but generations to come. So the seven principles are plan ahead and prepare, which we kind of talked about in the beginning. Travel and camp on durable surfaces. So a lot of people don't understand this. If there's a trail cut, don't go off trail. Don't make your, new, uh, your own new trail. It degrades, um, the land, the surfaces for erosion, other things. If there's a trail, stick to the trail. That's kind of what that one means. Dispose of waste properly. That is both food waste, human waste. Um, anything that you take in with you, bring it back out with you. Um, so if you plan on being outside for several hours, make sure you have things to take care of nature when nature calls. Um, and that you, you pack everything, even the toilet paper out with you. Do not leave it there, do not bury it. Animals dig things up, they will find it. 
The whole point is to leave nature as you found it. Um, leave what you find. We love taking souvenirs home with us, but if we all take a souvenir, there's not much left in nature. So leave, leave it there. Um, the whole saying of take only pictures and leave only footprints. Um, have that mindset when you go outside. Enjoy it in the moment, look at it, cherish it, but leave it right where you found it. Uh, minimize campfire impacts. Hopefully, if you're just hiking, you never need a fire. because That means something went wrong, but um, minimize your campfire impacts. Either use designated rings or find a, a, a place that that's okay to do that. Respect wildlife and be considerate of other visitors, which we kind of talked about in the um, trail etiquette. So those are the seven principles. You can visit leave no trace, um, org. here it is, um, to learn more about that and find resources on how um, to help really conserve and not have a huge impact on our public lands. So guys, that is pretty much the end. I would love to know if you have any questions. Um, you can type them in the chat. Uh, or the q and I'm going to go check those now. I want to thank you so much for attending this virtual workshop. Um, we are offering more. Up next, we'll have a Fishing 101 on January 26, Tuesday night at 7. You can register again through Eventbrite. Um, other, other workshops we're going to offer, um, these are going to be bi-weekly Tuesday nights starting at 7, all virtual. Um, until we get past, we get out of the COVID woods, I will say. Um, wilderness Survival Shelter Building, Camp Cooking 101, Backpacking 101, and Basic Bike Maintenance. Um, when I end this, there will be a follow-up survey. I would love to get that from you guys. But real quick, let me go over here. What about silk? Uh, Miss Tina asked a question, I guess that's in relation to clothing. Um, I don't own silk clothing, so I cannot speak to that. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that would be a good choice in the woods. It is not something I typically see in retail stores as an option. So, um, I'm, I'm going to like say no, probably not. That would probably be best left for indoor spaces in the bedroom. <laughs> uh, Katie G has a question. Um, any additional tips if you are hiking alone? Um, I personally loved to solo hike, but I always had my dogs, a dog or my dogs. So that would kind of be my tip for solo hiking is take a pup with you. They tend to scare things off. Um, if you don't have a dog, then plan ahead know kind of have an idea and sense of the trail that you're getting yourself on um you know what resources are available if if there's park rangers available to help um assist with anything um is it again i'm a fan of, of solo hiking I, th I think there's a lot that can come with just mindful meditation walking in the woods and you can do that in well trafficked areas or in complete remote areas i think more trafficked areas might be better just because there's others around to help if anything were to happen. Sprained ankles, blisters, whatever. Um, if you are in a very remote setting and solo hiking, um, less people around to help, um, things like that. So those are kind, I know that doesn't really answer your question specifically, but um, I think females have to think about it a lot more too. Um, what kind of situation you're getting yourself in, um, who's around. I think these are things females think about a lot. And so I would take all that into consideration. I think the woods are a less scary place naturally than urban settings um, as far as perceived danger of others on you. So um, that's kind of my answer to your solo question. And there are a lot of resources out there on how to get into solo hiking and things you can consider. So maybe do a quick Google search to find more information specific to uh, kind of kind of your attitude and your your hopes in going solo hiking. Uh, is bear repellent a necessity? Uh, no, <laughs> you do not need bear repellent. Um, now, 
I'm standing in Chattanooga, Tennessee in, in the South and bear repellent is not necessary here. I can't speak for the Pacific Northwest, British Columbia, Minnesota, any of the places that I saw some people register from. So it may be different in your neck of the woods as to whether bear repellent is recommended or not. Um, I think if you find yourself in a state park, national park, um, very remote settings, maybe, but um, I've run into bears out on the trail. They are more scared of you than you are of them. Um, a lot of them have become accustomed to humans, especially like the Smoky Mountains. Um, and so that's kind of the hard part is if they're desensitized to human activity, they will get close. But for the most part, you get big, you get loud, that is your repellent. You are not food to them, they're gonna go away. As far as for snake bites, um, that is a more real concern. Um, watch your foot placement. Having hiker hiking boots with ankle support can kind of prevent those low snake bites um, on your ankles. Um, having those um, trekking poles to kind of plot in front of you, maybe you'll see something before it actually gets you. Um, not going off trail, because again, you, you typically have a clear view when you're on a designated trail. Um, you'll be able to see those snakes and not have, um, not encounter snake bites. But most first aid kits that you buy off the shelf, the little pre-made ones, will have some sort of snake bite um, ointment or something in it. Uh, unless you know which snakes are venomous, get out of the woods ASAP and get yourself to a hospital, um, especially if you start feeling bad. Most people will draw a circle around the bite mark. And if the red continues to grow past that, um, that's a concern because that means it's venomous. So um, I hope that helps answer some of your guys' questions. Um, I wanna thank you guys again for attending. This has been awesome. Um, if you have any, I'm going to send a, a follow-up email thanking you guys. It'll include a survey link. Let me know how I did. Um, and then if you have any other questions, feel free to email those to me. Um, we are going to randomly select, um, one person that attended tonight to receive the REI Map and Compass Navigation course. And I will email the link to that person, um, in order for them to uh, register for that class. And let me check the chat real quick. So some people have said they've hiked a lot in the past, but they don't have any gear. Somebody recently moved to Tennessee and they've begun hiking around the area on beginner friendly trails. Good. Uh, awesome, Felix, thank you. Rails to Trails website is a good one. Thank you. I totally forgot that one. Um, Old railroad beds, so pretty wide and flat. Um, and a lot of those are being converted now to trails, um, whether they're biking or hiking. So Felix, awesome, good job, I love it. Um, Facebook, the Tennessee Hiking Group, yes. There is Women Who Hike Tennessee. Um, there's Middle Tennessee Hiking Group. There's East Tennessee Hiking Group. So um, go find your tribe online, they exist and get plugged in. Um, we talked about all trails, but there's a gut hook. Um, I'm not familiar with that one, but I'm sure it's good. Um, which ones do not require Wi-Fi connect to operate? So most of your apps, once downloaded to your phone, you should not need Wi-Fi. They should operate within your phone. Um, that's my, my understanding. Even when I don't have service, I can utilize my um, Strava GPS tracker and other things. So um, yes, plug for the girls who hike Tennessee. Yes, that is, that is one that you can connect with. There's moms who hike, there's, again, it, whatever your tribe is, you'll find them. Um, Avenza is a neat app. I have not heard of that one. I am going to look it up after this. Um, yes, the slides will be sent out after the um, in the follow-up email. Thank you for saying that. Um, I can also share a link right now. Um, thank you guys, I appreciate it.
but still tracks heat. So maybe not good for cold hikes. I have no idea. I'm, I'm now seriously going to have to go look up what silk <laughs> fabric does for outdoor wear. Uh, cause that's not something I have, I own. Um, now I did a science experiment way back in school to see which uh, piece of fabric uh, thread had the most strength in silk one. That's all I remember about silk. Um, yes, bike packing and the bike maintenance are not on Eventbrite yet. Those will get uh, put up soon. So just keep checking. You can also follow Outdoor Chattanooga on Eventbrite to get notified when we upload events and or on Facebook. Um, to get notified when we blast those there as well. Um, thank you guys. Let me go and grab the link for the slides in case you want to download those real quick and for the survey. Otherwise, I'm going to wrap this up and I really appreciate you guys staying tuned for this whole thing. And hopefully you will be the lucky winner of the Map and Compass course. Let's see. All right, here are the presentation slides in case you want them. If not, feel free to end. And here is the survey. Again, thank you guys so much. I'm Sunshine with Outdoor Chattanooga. You can visit us online, outdoorchattanooga.com, in person when we finally get back to work. Um, Facebook, Instagram. We also have a YouTube channel where we are attempting to teach outdoor skills virtually. Technology is not our area of expertise, getting outside and playing is. So thank you so much for your time and attention tonight. And I hope to see you guys out on the trail soon. Bye.